Okonomiyaki is a classic Japanese pancake and you can top it with all these really fun toppings. It's really delicious. My version has a mad genius twist and it uses one of my favorite tools in the kitchen, which is a waffle iron. So I've preheated my waffle iron. Uh, as you can see, a little steam comes off it. And this is a Belgian waffle iron, so that's the one you want to use for this tip. And I'm going to go ahead and take a couple slices of bacon, and I'm just going to go ahead and add it right to the waffle iron. And this is going to do two things. Not only is this going to cook the bacon, because we want to cook it, but it's also going to kind of help grease the waffle iron so that we're not having to use any nonstick coating. And I have it on about medium-high heat. I'm going to close the top. Doesn't have to be perfect. The bacon is gonna shrink as it cooks. And I'm gonna close it, and this is gonna go for about five minutes. So in the meantime, I am going to start my pancake batter. So the first thing I need is two large eggs. Crack these right in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take a whisk and just give it a quick little mix. Now I'm going to add chicken stock. And this is kind of classic in okonomiyaki, where you make a custard using eggs and a broth. So I'm just gonna drizzle it in. And I also am gonna add about a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, about a tablespoon of melted unsalted butter, right in there, and then I have a half a cup of all-purpose flour. Add that pretty much all at once. And at this point, you don't wanna mix it too much. Instead, I'm just going to mix it until it's barely smooth. All right, that looks pretty smooth to me. You kind of see how the batter is eh, just a little thick, but not too thick. And we're gonna go ahead and check the baking because I hear that it stopped sizzling. So I'm gonna give it a little peek. Whoa, look at it. Actually, what I wanna do here is I'm just gonna actually kind of flip it over so that it gets brown on all sides because I want it to be nice and crispy. Close, and I'm gonna continue getting my other ingredients together. I'm also going to incorporate some green cabbage. Um, so here I have just a quarter of a green cabbage and I'm going to shred it pretty finely and just go really thin. And I need just about a half a cup, that looks good. And I'm going to cut some carrot. So I actually don't like to peel my carrots. Instead, I take a small vegetable brush and just run it under a little cool water to get off any grit. To shred this, just slice it on an extreme bias, on a really sharp angle, really thinly. Stack up your little slices, just like that. And you have these beautiful little slivers of carrot. And now I just need a little bit of scallion. I need about a quarter cup of scallion. So I probably just need about two here. Then I'll probably have just enough left over so that I can garnish it at the end. Let's check this out. This looks good to me. I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer it right over here. Okay, so my wall fire is nice and hot. We're gonna almost use it like an electric skillet or a griddle. And I'm gonna take about half the cabbage, scatter it right on top. Oh, you can see actually how it kind of starts to sizzle and fry. Look how cool that is. We're gonna add half of our carrots as well and then about half our scallions here. We're gonna let that cook for about 30 seconds just to kind of slightly soften the vegetables. And you could see that the carrots and scallions, actually their color gets much brighter. That's how you know they're kind of crisp tender. And we're gonna add half of our pancake batter. And again, we are not closing the waffle iron just yet. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this on nice and evenly. Beautiful. So you wanna let this go. It's on high and we wanna cook it just until the eggs start to set around the edge. Okay, so it's been about 30 seconds. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna close the waffle iron. You're gonna close it very gently and you're not gonna lock it. In this case, my waffle iron doesn't have a latch, but some of them come with a little latch. Do not flip it. So let it go. All right, and in about 30 seconds, we are gonna have the most mad genius okonomiyaki you've ever had. All right, while that cooks, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish slicing these scallions for garnish. And for that, I wanna go on a real bias because I want these kind of beautiful slivers to put on top. And these will be really pretty sprinkled on top at the end. You ready? You ready? Here we go. Whoa, look at that. It's puffed up, but you could still see all the carrots and the scallion and the cabbage. And so I like to take a fish spatula and I'm just gonna kind of Lift it up very gently, it's very hot, and you're gonna flip it over itself. There we go. And then you're gonna transfer it to a little serving plate just like this. Now, I get to top it with some of my favorite things in the whole entire world. The first one, everyone knows this guy, sriracha. 
It's fiery, it tastes a little sweet, it's so good on this. And then of course we have Kewpie, which is Japanese mayonnaise. It's seasoned mayonnaise, it's so good. We're gonna top it with our beautiful scallions. And now the secret ingredient, which is Bonito. And Bonito is shavings of dried tuna. What you do is you just take the little shavings and look at them go, they start to curl up because of that heat just kind of activates them right when they hit it. And last but certainly not least, we have our bacon, which I'm gonna just chop up into little pieces or you can break it and that goes right on top. And what I'm getting that you're not getting is this smells so good. Get a little bit of sriracha. With a little help from my trusty waffle iron, I have made a mad genius version of okonomiyaki.